Dear students, this video is in continuation with the previous video of Act 2, Scene 9. In the previous video, we had read that Prince of Aragon chooses the silver casket, assuming that he is the one who deserves Portia. Uh, he has already opened the silver casket, but he doesn't say anything. So, on seeing that, Portia says, too long a pause for that which you find there. So she is saying that you pause too long for uh, for what you have found in the casket. So Prince of Aragon says, What's here? The portrait of a blinking idiot presenting me a schedule. So what has Prince of Aragon found in the casket? So he had found a picture of a blinking idiot with the scroll. I'll read it. How much unlike art thou to Portia? How much unlike my hopes and my deservings? So as if he's talking to the portrait of Blinking Idiot. So he says that you are very unlike, like uh, you don't, uh, you're not similar to what Portia looks like. And you're very, un, uh, you're very unlike my hopes and my deservings. So what did he hope? He hoped to win Portia. He hoped that he'll find portrait of Portia in the casket. But uh, what he found was a portrait of blinking idiot uh, that was very unlike Portia and very unlike what he he thought he deserved and uh, he hoped. Who chooseth me shall have as much as he deserves. So he reads the inscription on the silver casket again. Did I deserve no more than a fool's head? So he's very surprised. Says, didn't I deserve anything more than this blinking idiot, this fool's head? Is that my price? Are my deserts no better? So he's saying, are my deserving no better than this portrait of a blinking idiot? Don't I deserve more than this? So on hearing this, Portia says, to offend and judge are distinct offices and of opposed nature. He says, judging what you deserve is one thing and offending you is something very different. So he's saying you are doing two things of different nature. To commit an offense and to pass, pass a judgment on the offense. You know, just uh, trying to, uh, she says as if you are trying to uh, say that whatever you are trying to give reasons for whatever you have done. These are two different offices. To commit an offense and to pass a judgment on the offense are quite different actions. And their nature are opposed to each other. So he says you shouldn't say that. So she doesn't like that. So Aragon had done wrong by choosing the wrong casket. But uh, he is unable to judge himself. So he's saying that you have already done one wrong, other wrong you are doing by judging that uh, do, I, do you deserve nothing better than this. So they are two different uh, offices, they are two different actions and you shouldn't do that. That is what Portia is saying, Prince of Aragon there. So now Prince of Aragon is reading what is written on the scroll. He says what is here, he reads, he reads the scroll. The fire seven times tried this. She says that the fire, the silver is refined in a furnace for seven times. Before a metal turns into a silver, it has to go through fire seven times. Seven times tried that judgment is that never choose a miss. This is a perfect judgment that never makes a mistake is also te tested seven times like silver. So, in order to get a perfect judgment, uh, it has to be tested seven times so that it never goes wrong. That did never choose a miss. So, here uh, a miss means wrong. So, if you don't want to make a wrong judgment, you have to uh, you know, test it seven times. Like silver is tested seven times before it, it actually becomes a silver metal. Some there be that shadows kiss, some have but, such have but a shadows bliss. He says that there are some people who embrace just illusions, who, be, who live in an illusionary world and they believe in illusions. There are some people 
who um, who just are run after illusions who run after uh, things that are uh, just imaginary such have but shadows bliss such people only have illusions of happiness so the, there are some foolish people who um, who chase shadows and they only get an appearance of happiness they just get a illusion of happiness there be fools alive i wish silver doer and so was this so he says there are some foolish men who are disguised by silvery hair of old age so there are some people who have silver hair that is white hair because of their old age and so was this see that there are a few people so what does he mean that there are few foolish people who are disguised by silver hair uh, of old age so they though they uh, are thought to be very uh, intelligent and experienced because of the uh, old uh, silver hair on their head similarly this casket had a covering of silver this casket was disguised with that silver covering silver metal silver doer and so was this so he saying like people with the silver hair that is white hair uh, they represent old age they represent their age they represent their intelligence or their experience but in inside that silver hair in their head they are actually foolish people okay so foolish people with silver hair are compared to this blinking idiot that is covered by the silver casket okay so he's saying that is uh, this, this, it is very similar to the people who have old hair uh, uh, sorry who have white hair on their head who have silver hair on their head but inside their uh, head they are fools so similarly he says this casket is disguised with the silver but inside it is a is uh, is a, a fool with blinking eyes is a portrait of a fool with blinking eyes so he says i will ever be your head so the, this as if the uh, scroll is to uh, talking to the person who has um, who has got that so he says that i will always be your head so he says uh, so be gone you are sped so he's saying you are finished your chance is over you should leave now so uh, what does the scroll uh, says here he says that uh, the silver metal is tested seven times before it becomes silver and any uh, a judgment that a perfect judgment that is not wrong is has also to be tested seven times and he says that there are some people who live in a illusionary world and they get illusionary happiness only and he also talks about foolish people who are disguised by silver hair of old age and uh, this casket was also similar to those people because it has a covering of silver and um, the the uh, portrait of blinking idi idiot is covered by this silver casket and he says that you are also um, uh, it i will ever be your head so he says you will always remain a foolish person so you should leave because your chance is over so this is what was written on the silver casket so uh, what prince of morocco says after reading the scroll he says still more fool i appear by the time i linger here so he says if i stay for much more time here i'll i'll appear to be a greater fool so he says um, with one fool's head i came to woo but i go with two so he says that i came with one head because he calls himself a fool he says i came here with one uh, here as a fool and i am going um, with heads two fools head because one his and other what has he got a portrait of a blinking idiot a portrait of a fool okay so that is why he says that i came here with one fool said and um, i am going um, by taking two 
sweet adieu so she he wish, wishes um, farewell uh, he says bids farewell to portia i'll keep my oath patiently to bear my worth so he says that i'll keep my oath that he will leave immediately uh if he finds uh, if he doesn't find portia's portrait in the casket so he says that i'll keep my oath and he um leaves he says um, i'll i'll uh, patiently bear my wrath that means patiently to suffer um, misfortune and he leaves with his train now as he has uh, left portia says that thus had the candle singed the moth so aragon here is compared to a foolish insect that is moth you all might have uh, seen this insect that flutters around bright light and it it's usually burnt with that light dies it has a very short span of life and um, he says that he um, uh, he compares uh, per prince of aragon to moth that are uh, uh, attracted by light and uh, he says that such kind of people are burnt by by their light only so they run after illusionary things and um, they get those illusions only so he's saying that um, thus one more moth has been burnt by the candle oh these deliberate fools so he calls uh, prince of aragon a deliberate fool uh, deliberate fool here means fools who give uh, possible reasons for their actions so they make mistakes and then they try to justify their mistake when they do choose they have the wisdom by the wit to lose so he says that uh, their reasoning uh, gives them enough intelligence to make the wrong choice and thus to lose so he was he had uh, been given so much of superficial knowledge that makes him lose so he talked so much that is what portia believes so before he makes choice of silver casket he has talked so much so he's saying that such people they have uh, so much of wisdom so called wisdom and because of that wisdom they make wrong choices so that is why uh, she calls him uh, deliberate fools fool so you see he compares uh, such kind of people to deliberate fools when they do choose they have the wisdom by their wit to lose so when they choose they uh, the wisdom of their uh, knowledge makes them lose so they lose because of their wisdom only so then she says the ancient saying is no hearsay hanging and wiving goes, goes by destiny so she refers to a old uh, proverb there uh, where he says that um, hanging and uh, wiving so he's saying that ancient uh, proverb is not a false teaching because hanging and wiving hanging means when you are hanged by death hang till death you no know? and wiving means when uh, getting a wife so it's all decided by destiny that is what um, the proverb means that hanging that being hanged and uh, being married to a wife are decided by fate Portia come draw the curtain Narissa so she orders uh, she says tells Narissa to uh, draw the curtain enter a servant so now the servant has entered a servant has entered where is my lady so the servant is asking that where is lady portia portia here what would my lord so she saying um, how can i help you um servant madam there is an uh, there is a lighted at your gate a young venetian that comes before to signify the approaching of his lord so he is says that madam a young venetian venetian means a person from venice has arrived at your gate and he has been sent in an advance to his master to announce the arrival of his master so he is just a messenger he says who comes before his master to tell that his master will be approaching soon uh, from whom he bringeth sensible regrets 
so he is saying that he brings with him precious tokens of courtesy and uh, uh, sensible here means uh, substantial that means not only words but uh, gifts too so greets means greeting so he has bring along with him not only um, verbal greeting but also gifts to wit besides comments and courteous breath so he says that besides the um, to wit means that is to say that besides he says i am saying sensible regrets means substantial gifts uh, because uh, uh, he says that i'm i'm saying this because um, he complements these gifts with um, words of courtesy gifts of rich value so he says that he brings from um, this his master uh, precious tokens of courtesy he says that is to say costly gifts in addition to greetings and messages yet i have not seen so likely an ambassador of love he says so far i have not seen such a generous ambassador of love because earlier also suited suitors had come and uh, if you remember um, before prince of morocco arrived a messenger had come the telling that uh, his master is coming approaching soon so so uh, messengers usually come before their masters arrive so he says i have never um, seen before him such a generous ambassador of love because he has also brought with him gifts of rich value so a day in april never came so sweet so he says a day in april um, never began so pleasantly so this was a uh, showing that uh, um, uh, later we'll read uh, read so this um, day in april that has Uh, brought with it so many gifts he says shows that to show how costly summer was at hand so uh, so because of uh, this uh, uh, you know generous uh, gifts he says that uh, a day in april never began so pleasantly showing that uh, rich summer is at hand so that approaching summer is going to be very rich as this force parer comes before lord force parer means one who um spun on his horse in advance of the main party that is the messenger so force parer here means messenger only the so he says that what does the the servant tells forcia that a young venetian has arrived he tells about his master that he will be arriving soon so his lord has brought sent gifts along with the polite greetings and gifts are very expensive that is what he means and he says that i have never seen uh, such a promising messenger of love so he says that um, um, the way the uh, the person the man has come the messenger has come and um, he says that uh, he hopes that uh, the summer will be um, very costly uh and he, he says also says that uh, a day in april never was never promising as this is so on hearing this porcia says no more i pray thee so she she thinks as if he has um, praised the messenger a lot he says i don't want to hear any more i am half afraid that thou will say and then he is some kin to thee so he says that i fear that you would say that he is uh, a relation to yours since you bestow on him uh, such great praise so he say uh, thou spendest such high wit in praising him so he says you are praising him so much i am afraid that you will say that he is one of your relative because um, she thinks that maybe he is uh, the messenger who has come is in some way linked to the servant that is why he is praising him so much so he says that i think soon you'll say that he is some of your relative because you are praising him so much come come naresa for i long to see quick cupid's uh, post that comes so mannerly so cupid as you've read earlier also is classical god of love post means messenger so he's saying uh, she's uh, asking naresa to come because uh, she wishes to see this messenger of cupid messenger of love uh, who has arrived in such a decent manner narissa 
Basanio, Lord love, if thy will it be. So he say she hopes that I hope that uh, it is uh, thy will that this is Basanio, um, God of love. So he saying that the messenger who has come is a messenger from Basanio. He means maybe it is Basanio, O God of love. If um, such thy will, so he says that she wish, wishes that it uh, the messenger is messenger of Pisanius, and she has probably guessed it right. So we end the scene here. I hope you have understood the scene. And in, in case you have any doubts, please feel free to message me. Thank you so much.